Hello, in this video I'm going to be doing the SAT questions from the practice non-calculator section that was passed out at the end of class yesterday. So let's get started. Uh, in number one, uh, what you should see immediately is that the uh, y-intercept of this line is positive one. And then by looking at all the answer choices, I can see that there's only one choice that has plus one for the y-intercept, making D the answer choice. Let's move to number two. The key to number two is the idea of circumference, right? So circumference is uh, the perimeter of a circle. And when they talk about um, the length of minor arc AC, they're talking about the measure of part of the circumference AC. So even if you didn't know that they were four equal parts, uh, your best estimate would be to take the circumference and divide by four and get nine, which is um, answer A. Next question. And this uh, problem here, this is a factoring problem. So we have uh, 4x squared minus 8x minus 12. Uh, and so when uh, multiplying, uh, when factoring a trinomial with a greater than 0, we have to take uh, 4 and multiply by 12 first, getting 48. And now we're looking for factors of 48 that add or subtract to negative 8. So uh, it looks like because negative 12 is subtraction, it's going to be subtract. But let's set it up. So we have 4x in one, 4x in the other, right? And so now factors of 48 that subtract to negative 8, well, it's going to be 12 and 4 again. So we have 12 and 1, 4 in the other, and uh, negative the negative 8 is negative, so we want to make the bigger number negative. And then I simplify my um, binomials here, and I get x minus 3 and uh, x plus 1. Now, uh, the answer will be the opposite of each of these. So we have 3 in this one, and we have negative 1 here. And it looks like b is the only option that has those number 4. Which of the following is an example of a function whose graph in the xy plane has no x-intercepts? So no x-intercepts means there's no intersection point. So a linear function whose rate of change is not zero, well, that's not true. Uh, a quadratic function with real zeros, well, that is the definition of an x-intercept, so that's not it. A quadratic function with no real zeros, so the opposite, and c would be the answer. Number five. In this problem right here, we have uh, x equals 9. So we're going to start by plugging in uh, 9 into the problem. So we have the square root of k plus 2 uh, minus 9 equals 0. I'm going to not add 9 to both sides. So we get the square root of uh, k plus 2 uh, equals 9. We're going to square both sides. And I get k plus 2 is equal to 81. Subtract 2 from both sides, and I get k is equal to 79, which is d. Number 6. Which of the following is equivalent to the sum of the expression a squared minus 1 and a plus 1. So sum is great news because it's the easiest of the operations to perform. So we have a squared minus 1 plus a plus 1. And then a quick look at our like terms here. We have negative 1, positive 1, and we are left with a squared plus a, which is a. Number 7. Jackie has two summer jobs. She works as a tutor, which pays $12 per hour, and she works as a lifeguard, which pays $9.50 per hour. She can work no more than 20 hours a week, but she wants to earn at least $220 per week. Which of the following systems of inequalities represents the situation in terms of x 
and Y, where X is the number of hours she tutors and Y is the number she works as a lifeguard. So what jumped out at me is some of these inequalities because I, I noticed right away that the difference between each answer is the way the inequality is facing. So if I look to some of those keywords with inequalities, for example, no more than 20. So it has to be, we're looking for less than or equal to 20. So not that one. That one is good. That one's good and not that one. Uh, and then um, the other inequality keyword would be um, at least 220 per week, right? So in that case, we are looking for, well, at least that's, that's greater than or equal to, right? Greater than or equal to 220. I look and I can see that C is the answer. Number eight. In air, the speed of sound S in meters per second is a linear function of air temperature T in degrees Celsius and is given by S of T equals 0 0.6 T plus 331.4. Which of the following statements is best is the best interpretation of the number 331.4 in this context? So an understanding of the slope intercept form, we can see that 331.4 is the y intercept. Well, what needs to be zero in order to have the y intercept? That would be t. So the temperature needs to be zero. Now I looked at the answer choices and I said, well, there's only one that has zero anyway. And is it temperature? It is. So A is the answer. Number nine. We have another um, system of equation here and it's going to be substitution. Uh, so because y equals x squared. So if we take y and we substitute x squared, we get to two x squared plus six equals two x plus three. Okay, I'm gonna distribute my two, I get two x squared plus six equals two x plus six. Um, I can uh, subtract six from both sides, so I get two x squared equals two x. Then I divide by two on both sides and I get x squared equals x. Well, that's a unique situation that we got here. Uh, so um, why don't we plug in some numbers to see what happens here. So if I start with uh, uh, nine, nine squared is 81, that doesn't equal nine. Three squared is nine, that doesn't equal three. Two squared is four, that doesn't equal two. One squared equals one, so it has to be A. Number 10. A squared plus B squared equals Z and AB equals Y. Which of the following is equivalent to 4Z plus 8Y? So we have uh, 4 times Z. So this is going to be 4 times A squared plus B squared uh, plus 8AB. All right, so let's start by distributing the 4. We get 4A squared plus b squared uh, plus 8ab. Then I'm going to uh, pull out, uh, we, uh, we got a, oh, we forgot a four. Uh, now I'm going to pull out a greatest common factor of four. So I have four, and this is gonna be a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. And the reason why this problem is, pro is, is tricky is because you have to remember what a perfect square trinomial is. And uh, what we have here, a squared plus b squared plus 2ab is one. So what we can do is we can factor this. And when I do, I get 2a plus 2b squared, which is b. All right, so the volume of a uh, right circular cylinder A is 22 cubic centimeters. What is the volume in cubic centimeters of the right circular cylinder with twice the radius and half the height? So uh, your best bet for this one 
is to just plug in numbers and see if you can figure out what's going on. So in a cylinder one, why don't we make the radius equal to two and the height equal to two. And now in my second uh, cylinder, why don't we make the radius is doubled. So radius equals four and height equals one half. So uh, the formula for um, the volume of a cylinder is pi times the radius squared times the height. So in this case, we're going to do uh, pi times two squared times two. All right, so the, uh, this is two squared is four, four times two is eight. So this is gonna be eight pi. Over here, we have uh, pi times four squared times one. Four squared is 16, 16 times one is 16. This is gonna be 16 pi. Uh, well, what's the, uh, what's the change? 8 to 16 is double. So double 22 would be 44, which is C. Number 12. Which of the following is equivalent to 9 to the 3 fourths um, power? Well, when dealing with a fractional exponent, you have to remember that the numerator of the fraction is the exponent, and the denominator of the fraction is the root. So this is 9 to the third power times 4. Well, 9 to the third power is simply 9 times 9 times 9, right? So that's going to be 81 times 9, which is 729. Now, we did in class, what we did is we we did prime factorization for a square root. It works the same way with the fourth root, except instead of looking for every 2, you take one out. You, have, you need 4 to take one out. So... 729 is going to go into 3, and I know that because 7 plus 2 is 9, and 9 plus 9 is 18, and 18 is divisible by 3. So let's divide here. We get uh, 3, and uh, um, it looks like uh, uh, 3 goes into 7 twice, with one left over, 4, and then 3, 243. So again, I'm going to have a 3 because 4 plus 2 is 6, and 6 plus 3 is 9, so this is going to be 3. And then it looks like 81. 81 is going to be 9 times 9. And both of these will be 3s, right? So we have our factor tree here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Well, taking a quick look here, uh, we, uh, we can take one set of 4 out. And looking at here, uh, we have uh, 1, 3, the only answer choice that has one three taken out, so D is the answer. Number 13. At a restaurant, N cups of tea are made by adding T tea, tea bags to hot water. If T equals N plus 2, how many additional tea bags are needed to make each additional cup of tea? Well, each, right, is the key word, right? Because this is a rate, this is slope. So again, an understanding of y equals mx plus b will bring us right to the answer. It's the slope. What is the slope? The slope is 1. Number 14. In this problem here, the function f is defined by the equation above. Which of the following is the graph of y equals negative f of x in the xy plane? So what I can see here is that I could probably eliminate some choices uh, by finding the y-intercept. So because they have a positive 2, a negative 1, a negative 2, and a negative 1, I have some varying y-intercepts. So let's do this. Negative f of x is equal to 2. Now let's think about this for a second, right? The, um, well, 2 to the x plus 1, right? And what do we have to substitute in to find the y-intercept? zero. So negative f of zero equals two to the zero plus one. This is going to be one plus one. Negative f of zero is equal to two. So f of zero is going to be equal to negative two. All right, well that's good news for us because there's only one that has a y-intercept of negative two and that is c. Number 15. Alan drives an average 100 miles per week. His car can travel an average of 25 miles per gallon of gasoline. Per
per gallon of gasoline. Allen would like to reduce his weekly expenditure on gasoline by $5. Assuming gasoline costs $4 per gallon, which equation can Allen use to determine how many fewer average miles M he should drive each week? So in looking at this problem, I can see that there's two um, outputs for this equation. Well, what is the equation Y? It, we, he, it wants to determine how many fewer average miles, right? It doesn't want to determine miles total. So I know it's not 95 because the output of the equation should be 5. Now, based on this, we have to ask ourselves the uh, coefficient of m. Well, 25 over 4 is going to make m bigger, and 4 over 25 is going to make m smaller. Well, we want to make m smaller, right? Because we started with 100 miles and we're ending 5 miles less, right? So d is the most logical answer choice. 16. Maria plans to rent a boat. The boat rental costs $60 per hour, and she will also have to pay a water safety course that costs $10. Maria wants to spend no more than $280 for the rental and the course. If the boat rental is available only for a whole number of hours, what is the maximum number of hours which Maria can rent the boat? So some key terms here, per hour, 60 per hour is going to be 60x. Uh, it looks like a, uh, a, she has to pay for a course that's $10. And she wants to pay no more than 280, right? So uh, this has to be less than or equal to 280. Okay, based on our, let's just solve, we'll treat this like an equation and solve. I subtract 10 from both sides. So 60x is greater than, uh, less than or equal to 270. And then uh, dividing by 60 on both sides, I get x is less than or equal to 4.5. So now the question is, what would you put in for the answer? It's a whole number. Well, rounding would make us go to five, but look at the inequality, right? The inequality says less than or equal to. So the answer you would put in is four. 17. What value of P is the solution to the equation above? Okay, so uh, let's uh, distribute here. So we have 2P plus 2 plus 8P minus 8 equals 5p. All right, let's get numbers on one side, letters on the other. So we have um, 2p plus 8p minus 5p equals negative 2 plus 8. All right, 8 plus 2 is 10, minus 5 is 5p. 8 minus 2 is 6, divide both sides by 5, and I get P equal to 6 fifths. Number 18. All right, we have another system of equation here uh, where uh, Y is equal to 2X. It's a classic substitution method here. So we have uh, um, 1 half. 2x plus 2x, so equals 21 and a half. So 2x plus 2x is going to be 4x, so this is half 4x. Uh, half of 4 is 2x. And now I divide both sides by 2, right? And uh, we kind of went over this in class a little bit. We have uh, 21 halves divided by 2, which is 2 over 1. So it's going to be 21 halves times 1 over 2, right? Because it's keep, change, flip for division. And now I have uh, 21 over 4 as my final answer. Number 19. Um, one thing you have to remember about uh, rational equations is uh, you need common denominators. So if I were to expand this problem here, 
I have uh, 2x plus 6 is x plus 2, x plus 2, all right? Uh, now, what's missing from the second one? Well, what's missing is a second x plus 2. So I need to multiply the top and the bottom by x plus 2 to get a common denominator. All right, given that, uh, I get the equation um, 2x plus 6 minus 2x plus 4. All right, when subtracting polynomials, we need to distribute that negative first. So we have uh, 2x plus 6 minus 2x minus 4. Well, uh, 2x minus 2x is nothing, and 6 minus 4 is 2, so the answer is 2. <clears throat> Last question here. Uh, we have uh, intersecting lines R, S, and T are shown below. What is the value of x? So, couple things. Uh, we know uh, uh, we can find, this is a linear pair, 106 and this angle right here. So uh, working that out, we, we can do 180 minus 106. Well, 180 minus 100 is 80. 80 minus 6 is um, 74. 74. Okay, next, uh, what I can find is we can find this angle right here, which is a linear pair with the angle we need. So uh, if I take 180 and I subtract 74 plus 23, I can find that angle. Well, 70 plus 20 is 90, 4 plus 3 is 7, so this is 180 minus uh, 97. Uh, 180 minus 100 is 80, 80 plus 3 is 83, so we know this is 83. And then lastly, I have another linear pair, right? So this is gonna, these are gonna add to 180. So if I do 180 minus 83, so 180 minus 80 is 100, 100 minus three is 97 degrees for X. All right, so that is the non-calculator portion. Uh, again, uh, you have 25 minutes to complete 20 questions. Uh, feel free to email if you have any questions and um, we can sort it out.